Hey guys, my name is Chris and welcome back to the Modern Diver YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about stage bottles, sometimes also referred to as pony bottles. In this video we're going to be talking about what a stage or pony bottle is. We're also going to be talking about what makes a good stage or pony bottle. We're going to talk about how to assemble one including the stage rigging on a brand new cylinder. We're also going to be talking about uh, what makes a good stage regulator itself as well as actually assembling the first and second stage. So if this is something that interests you guys or you're starting to get into more advanced levels of diving, definitely stick around. Okay, so let's talk stage bottles. So a stage bottle uh, has three main components to it. Um, the simplest definition of a stage bottle is a self-reliant um, independent air source. This is a redundant air source separate from your primary back gas. Uh, there's three main components to a stage bottle. First off, you have the cylinder, you have the stage rigging kit, you then have the regulator. Related to the cylinder, these cylinders can be either, um, they can come in a range of different sizes. You can have an aluminum 30, which is a little bit shorter than this. You can have an aluminum 40, you can have an aluminum 80. Some people use low pressure steel cylinders. Uh, there are smaller cylinders than 20 cubic feet. However, um, they really don't give you a whole lot of air and it's really not designed to be used as an extension of your dive, which is what these kind of bottles can be used for. So sometimes you'll hear the name stage or pony bottle. Um, really the difference is whether or not they are a recreational diver or a professional or uh, technical recreational diver. Um, a pony bottle is basically an insurance policy. It's just an additional cylinder you would hang off your chest. Uh, usually these guys will clip to your upper left shoulder D-ring and then clip down to your lower left hip D-ring on a uh, DIR style harness. So a pony bottle, um, or sorry, this would be more of a pony bottle um, because it is filled with either air or nitrox, whereas this is designated to 100% oxygen, which I'll get into in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Uh, regarding this, so a pony bottle, basically it attaches to the front of your chest and it's just something that's going to hang on you for the majority of the dive. So it is used, as I mentioned, like an insurance policy. If you were diving deeper than uh, 60 feet, let's say, and you ran into a, an emergency, uh, you could quickly deploy this regulator, uh, pull this out, turn it on, and boom, you have another aluminum 80 on your chest to be able to turn the dive and safely get yourself back up to the surface. This can also be used for uh, other divers that are having an emergency as well. So if your dive buddy was to run out of air or somebody else on the dive was to run out of air, you have a redundant air source with a separate second stage and a separate first stage that you are able to give them to help them get out of an emergency situation. A stage bottle is a bit different. A stage bottle is actually a stage of that specific dive. So it's going to be used as part of your dive plan. This here is a oxygen decompression bottle. So this is 100% oxygen. I use this for my final safety stop um, or my final decompression stop, usually between 10 and 20 feet. Uh, depending on the dive, I might be breathing on this for a couple minutes. I might be breathing on this for 10 plus minutes. Um, but this is actually accumulated into my specific dive plan. So this is a stage bottle. It's an actual component that I'm planning on using, whereas a pony bottle is kind of like a passive um, safety accessory that you don't necessarily plan to use unless you have an emergency pop up. So let's talk about how to assemble a stage regulator and what makes a good stage regulator. <clears throat> All right, take number four. Okay guys, so to assemble your stage regulator, first you're going to need a first stage, you're going to need a second stage, you're going to need a six inch high pressure hose, you're going to need a small SPG, make sure you also have the spindle, you're going to need a uh, hose retainer of some sort, so like a fabric retainer to, to help secure the hose, you're going to need a 40 inch low pressure hose, Tool wise, you're going to need a 9 16th wrench, an 11 16th wrench, a uh, small slash medium size Allen key, and then also a uh, little bit of O2 compatible grease. So before we go to assemble this, I'm going to talk about the actual first and second stage. So for this particular stage reg, I am going to be using the Hollis DCX first stage. This is a DIN 
environmentally sealed diaphragm style first stage. A diaphragm style first stage has a lower internal pressure than a piston style first stage, which means that this is going to be very reliable for me in uh, cold water applications. It has the environmental seal here at the top, so that's going to help keep uh, ice from forming on the inside. It's also going to help keep salt water from getting into the first stage, so it's going to help cut down on corrosion and different things like that. Um, this particular first stage happens to have a pivot as well. A pivot is really nice because it allows you to stow your hose um, on your stage bottle nice and streamlined when you're not using it, but then when you go to deploy it, you just pull out the hose, bend it up, this pivot's gonna rotate with the regulator and it's gonna help cut down on jaw fatigue and it's gonna make it uh, very easy for you to, to, to breathe from your regulator. Um, regarding second stages, I always recommend using a high performance second stage. I'm using the Hollis LX200. This is the matching first uh, second stage to this first stage. It is a very high performing reg. It's got, uh, it's got an easy purge button on the front. It's got a very nice mouthpiece. It's got a wide bubble exhaust for cold water and you've also got uh, a lot of breathement adjustments. This is also a, re a reversible reg, so it can be swapped. So if I was ever to turn this into a side mount setup, I can also, um, this second stage can be also used for side mount if needed. So uh, yeah, let's talk about how to actually assemble this. So when you are assembling your reg, uh, there's a couple spots that you can start at. I personally like to assemble the SPG and the high pressure hose first. To do this, you're going to need, uh, as I mentioned, an SPG, your air spindle, and you're also going to need a hose. So first off, we have to grease up the O-rings on this air spool or spindle. There's a, there's a few different names um, that it goes by in the industry. Uh, if you are using this regulator with high levels of oxygen, you want to try and keep this as clean as possible. So when I grease this up, especially if I know it's clean from factory, what I'm going to do is I usually will just pop it through the bag like this. I'm then going to open up my oxygen compatible grease. I'm going to add just a little bit of grease to the O-ring. Just like that. All right. I am then going to grab the SPG. All right, I'm gonna insert this and I wanna be very careful that I do not get any sort of plastic stuck between here and there because that can cause the O-ring to leak. Once I have this guy, um, into the SPG, I'm going to grab the oxygen grease and I'm going to grease up this O-ring. These are dynamic O-rings, which means that they move. Um, a dynamic O-ring should always be greased because it will help cut down on wear and tear, whereas a static O-ring like this O-ring uh, does not move, so it doesn't need any additional grease like this. Okay, so now that we have that greased up, next is to insert the SPG into the high pressure hose. Pretty simple, just screw this guy on. You're going to need um, a wrench to tighten this up. Doesn't need to be extremely tight, just a, a fairly snug. Um, I'm gonna need an adjustable for that. Right, just like that should be more than enough. Okay, so now that we have the high pressure hose attached, the next I'm going to attach the uh, low pressure hose to the second stage. Okay, so I'm gonna untwist this. All right, uh, these guys are pretty fairly simple. All you need to do is just screw this in. Some divers choose to, to grease up these O-rings. Um, I personally don't. Uh, they usually don't require it, and oftentimes the grease just gives more of a surface for um, dirt and, and particulates and stuff to kind of stick to. So I tend to keep my regs fairly clean by, by not greasing that up too much, but I do still uh, double check the O-rings. This is a new hose, so um, I looked at everything before I started filming and it is going to be um, more than sufficient. Uh, once I have that attached, I'm going to grab this wrench. I'm just gonna gently snug that. Again, this doesn't need to be very tight. You do wanna be careful, this is a metal nut um, going into a plastic body. So if I was to put too much tension on this and tighten it up, I can over tighten this and I can cause a bit of a stress crack to happen in the threads. So just be very careful. Uh, Hollis I'm sure does sell a specific tool which will grab right onto this, this unique um, style nut. Um, I unfortunately just don't, don't have it with me today. Um, okay, so now we have to attach these components to the first stage itself. When you set up a stage bottle, I personally always have the valve opening facing me as a diver. So the regulator is going to sit on a tank just like this. I want to have the pivot 
on my right side. This means that when I deploy the hose, it's going to be sitting very close to my head and it's gonna very easily go around the back of my head into my mouth and it's gonna cut down on jaw fatigue. If I was to flip this around like this, it means that the hose is on the outside of my body and it's going to cause a little bit more jaw fatigue as it has to, uh, it has to bend a little bit more to get behind me. So this is gonna be the orientation of our first stage. Obviously, pretty easy to put on the second stage. This guy's gonna go into your low pressure ports. This regulator has five low pressure ports along the bottom here, and it has two high pressure ports. For the low pressure port, I'm going to open this up. Right, again, this is a static O-ring, so it does not need to be lubricated. Uh, you still wanna inspect it to make sure it, looks, it, looks, uh, it doesn't look damaged or anything like that. But again, this is all new, new equipment, so everything I know is in really good shape. I'm just gonna stand back a bit for a second. Makes it a bit easier to screw this in. All right, once I've got the thread started, I'm then going to just rotate the hose. Okay, that's gonna get it in finger tight. And then I'm gonna grab my wrench and again, I'm just gonna gently snug that up a little bit. Next, we need to install the high pressure hose. So a high pressure hose is going to go from the bottom high pressure port and go up like this. So I am going to remove this port plug using my Allen key. I am then going to attach the high pressure hose. So I'm just gonna gently thread that in. Again, it's a static O-ring. All right, I'm gonna use the wrench to, smaller size, I'm gonna use the wrench to snug that up a little bit. And there we go. Um, now the final step is I'm going to have the SPG sit on the first stage like this, and I'm going to use a fabric hose retainer. This hose retainer just helps keep the SPG, uh, again, nice and streamlined, but it is fabric, so it doesn't put a whole lot of tension on the hose, and if there was ever an emergency, I can always, uh, I can always cut it with a simple line cutter. Um, I don't recommend using zip ties. Zip ties can put... Um, they can be fairly sharp and they can actually damage the hose and they can also be very hard to remove if you don't have a pair of scissors with it. So uh, yeah, there we go guys. We've now assembled the second stage and the first stage. So what we're going to do is assemble the actual bottle itself and then I will show you guys how to put this all together. Okay guys, so now that we have assembled our stage regulator, the next step is to actually assemble the bottle itself. So for this, I'm going to be using a pre-made kit. This is a Halcyon stage kit. Uh, in a Halcyon stage kit, you've got a leash. Uh, your leash has um, obviously like a handle to it. It has two bolt snaps as well as a, uh, a loop that's gonna go around the top of the valve. You've got a pipe clamp. This pipe clamp needs to be the specific size for the bottle you're using. Again, I'm using a aluminum 40 for this. So it has the smaller size pipe clamp. And then you've also got two types of hose retainers. These are designed to help keep the hoses um, tight against the cylinder when you're diving in the water. So to assemble this, first we're going to need the leash and the pipe clamp. This loop goes around the top of the valve, as I mentioned. So usually I'm going to line this up first. The pipe clamp is designed to go between this knot and this knot um, at the bottom. So to put this on, I'm going to lift this up a bit. I'm going to line this up to where it needs to be. And this is gonna allow it to slide down the the length of the body of the bottle. Okay, the leash needs to be at the front of the bottle and it needs to be in line with the valve. Okay, that's very important. Uh, you also want this to be as tight against the bottle as you possibly can. So when you go to tighten this up, a pipe clamp has a small screw right here that you can use either a flathead screwdriver to tighten it up or sometimes you can also get a nut driver if you have the, if you have the right size. Um, so yeah, once that's in line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is lined up. I'm going to pull that down nice and tight using my other hand. I'm going to then stand behind it here and I am going to tighten this up. I usually try to make these as tight as possible. That way it doesn't slip on me in the water. Uh, nothing's worse than having a loose stage bottle during a dive. Okay, so once that's attached, uh, we're pretty much almost done. Next, we have to put our two hose retainers on. So these guys are just gonna slip over top. Put one there, and we're gonna put the second one right there. 
And there we go. That's how you install a stage kit. So now that the stage kit's assembled and we've assembled the regulator, the next and final step is to just put the regulator on the bottle itself. So to do this, again, this is going to be facing the diver, all right? This clips to your left um, shoulder D-ring and this clips to your left hip D-ring. This regulator, I'm gonna have the SPG facing me. I wanna have the swivel on my right side. So therefore this is going to screw in just like this. With any DIN regulator, always double check your O-ring before you screw it in. Double check your valve doesn't have any sort of debris or anything like that. I'm going to screw this in. All right, once that's attached, I am then going to stow the hose. So this hose just gets goes between the hose retainers here. Let's pull that down. Okay. There we go. So as I mentioned, when I'm not using it, all right, it's going to look exactly like that. So you've got your hose nice and streamlined against the side of the bottle that's being held by these two hose retainers. All right, I have a leash here that allows me to carry the bottle um, nice and easily. I've got my two bolt snaps to attach it to me securely. I've got a nice easy to read SPG that's going to be facing the diver. To deploy this and turn it on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressurize the reg. This is actually the first time I'm pressurizing it since I've assembled it, so I'm going to take a bit of caution. I'm also just going to make sure that uh, I listen for any sort of leaks or anything like that. So I'm going to pressurize this up. All right, seems to pressurize, no problem. Uh, this cylinder is nowhere near full. This is only at 900 PSI. So um, I'm definitely going to test it on a, a full cylinder before I, I take it out in open water to make sure I don't see any sort of leaks or anything like that. Uh, to go an extra step as well with any new regulator when you set it up, I usually recommend checking the internal pressure. Uh, the internal pressure is just going to confirm that everything inside is locking up as it properly should. So I have a BC here, BCD hose here that I'm going to attach to it later on and I'm going to double check. Um, I'm going to do a separate video later on about how to check the internal pressures of your regulators and why you should be doing that uh, quite frequently. But yeah, overall guys, that's how you would assemble a stage bottle or a pony bottle, um, depending on the type of diving that you're trying to do. This is designed to help extend your dive or possibly be part of your dive plan to allow you to go to um, extended ranges while you're diving. If you guys have any questions about these, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have any questions on um, other types of safety accessories like these, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks again guys for following along. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.